I'm Larry Handley, and this is For Better or Worse, brought to you by Little Brown Dog Productions. This is a podcast designed to help couples plan their wedding day by introducing them to the very best wedding professionals in the greater Cincinnati area. Today's guest is David Steven of David Steven Photography. David Steven, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. And I mean this in the best possible way. Yeah. But you get around, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Okay. The first wedding I think we ever did with you, yeah. we were doing uh, our interview with them maybe a week before the wedding. Okay. And the uh, photographer, the photographer came up and they said, it's David Steven. Yeah. He's coming in from Dubai. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Is that true? That's true. Yeah. That was, wow. That was, I mean, that wasn't too long ago, but that was from 2012 to 2015. And it was one of those situations where I had to do a little bit of damage control because here I have probably at the, at the, before we found out about the job opportunity for my wife, we had like, I don't know, I had probably eight weddings only, but I had to go, oh sh man, <laughs> we've got to figure out like how to calmly tell these brides like, hey, uh, I'm moving to Dubai, <laughs> you know? Not Dubai, Indiana. No. <laughs> like Dubai, Dubai. Yeah, like yeah. United Air Emirates, yeah. um, right next to Oman, um, connected to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Did you do any wedding photography there? No, I was looking into it, but, um, it's, it's really, you know, culturally the differences kind of put it to a halt because I'd have to have a very trusted second shooter, second female shooter that shoots all the female por portions of right. the wedding. Because of the culture. The culture. The, the weddings are completely split up the whole day. I think at, towards the end they combine a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's just, I, I just enjoyed, you know, raising our daughter, <laughs> surfing. <laughs> Uh, skiing indoors, you know, I hear you. snowboarding at a mall. Thank God for a good wife job, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> it was one of those things where, I mean, we lived in China from 2007 to 2009, so we Like thought, I said, you get around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we thought that was our last expat um, job, but then the Dubai came up and I was like, ah, let's do it. You know, we had so much fun in China and living abroad is a blast. Great and the amenities, the amenities are, uh, I'm not going to lie, really nice. So yeah. we just kind of got like a, one of those moments where we're like, this will be the last. Well, we were intimidated when they said that. Yeah. You know, they're flying the photographer in from Dubai. It was incredible. <laughs> but it was a pleasure meeting you then. We've yeah. worked with you many times since then. It's all been great. So yeah. thank you for doing this with us. Oh, my pleasure. How long have you been a photographer? Um, it's, it's been a little over 20 years since my first paying gig. But the, I mean, to be fair, I started um, working for a local newspaper while I was finishing up my senior year uh, in high school. So I kind of consider that, you know. You were paid? I was paid, yeah. yeah. And it was, it was fantastic, I loved it. And I worked, I assisted for some wedding photographers and I did a lot of photojournalism, but that's, that's been the start of it, was right on my senior year. So you didn't do weddings initially? How long did that take? No, so weddings came in 2005. Okay. No, 2006. Was that, and was that, did you need to be brave to do that? I did because, <laughs> you know, as a photographer and let's take, let's look at weddings back in 2005. They're nowhere near as, as, I don't know, creative, fun. I agree. As they are now. And there were rules, then, right? There were, there were kind of rules yeah. and there was also, I mean, I'm a pretty critical person and this stuff, the poses and everything I kind of made fun of, but at the same time, and, and I'm not trying to, to, we photographers kind of looked down on wedding photographers. Yes. Commercial photographers were like, oh, <laughs> you know. It was very rote and everybody did it the <clears throat> same way. That's and right. They were like these unwritten rules. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree. And so I didn't know, and, and, and it was one of my closest friends. She was getting married in an apple orchard in North Carolina. And she's like, look, I know you don't shoot weddings but I'd love for you to be a part of my wedding day and I, we're just gonna have fun. So no this was problem. your first wedding? Yeah, the first okay. wedding was an apple orchard in North Carolina and I was like, of course, you know, of course I'm gonna be a part of your day. And she's like, you can party with us and just, you know, do some of your photojournalism type stuff. And I fell in love because, um, I don't know, I, she allowed me to set up my own rules. 
So you kind of didn't have to look at what was being done then at that time and just did whatever I wanted, hand holding, just natural. I mean, we're in an apple orchard, so it kind of, it kind of was the perfect uh, first wedding for me to really fall in love with it. And a great couple, close friend, yeah. no rules. Okay, that was a friend. Yeah. So maybe that took the pressure off a little bit. Correct. But when you got your first paying wedding gig yeah. that you didn't know the people, yeah. were you petrified? No, because it was the same idea where I only had one wedding to show. And mind you, this is 2005, so it's like we have, I'm shooting film. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. For, right, you're not shooting digital. I'm not. Yeah. So I'm shooting film. I was trained on film. Um, you know, digital was slowly making its uh, play into the into our market, but I just would look at it, and I'm very picky with <laughs> everything in life, and I just thought that it looked pretty poor quality still. Mm -hmm. And I loved film. I loved, you know, I would shoot some black and white, and I would process that myself be in the dark room with that. And that was something that I sold to, to couples, right. you know, and so it took me a while to switch to digital. Yeah. Uh, were you convinced right away that weddings were your gig? You no, really like it? not at all. I mean, I was still getting paid really well to assist uh, some really awesome photographers mm -hmm. that have shaped who I am. Um, and, you know, at that age in my life, I was still very much just enjoying travel and enjoying doing whatever I wanted. And um, yeah, and I love the assisting. I was, I've was i been a part of some really big shoots with some pretty big photographers, Annette Navarro being one of them. And um, she's been a big part of my life and, and yeah. myself as a photographer. And I, I've picked up a lot of things that she's done in the past. And uh, we're still really close friends too, which is great. There's no doubt that who you become is a, uh, uh, amalgamation of all these people you work with and right. uh, you learn from them. Oh, so true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, when, uh, you do more and more weddings yeah. and you're also doing commercial shoots and other types of shoots, right. compare and contrast the types of work to me. What's the <laughs> difference between shooting for a Procter and Gamble or right. a GE and for a couple who's getting married? Yeah. The differences are pretty, I mean, it's, it's wild. It's, and it's changed over the years. Um, and I try my hardest to live a life of like not judging and not being negative, but you know, there have been times where it's tough working with certain art directors and the politics behind that. Um, but so then, more of the corporate world. Yeah, more of the corporate world, but that's changed. Like a lot of that has changed to where, you know, now you're working directly with um, small and larger businesses that have their own marketing team mm -hmm. and you work more with them or you work with them and their, their uh, PR people and so I found myself with getting a job with, or freelancing with um, Cincinnati Business Courier, that a lot of that's changed and it's kind of put my foot in the door where uh, in the past it hadn't. So I still tell people like I'm a passionate wedding photographer. I'm proud about it. Whereas sometimes you hear people that like shoot weddings to try to get into commercial. Um, but for me, it's just being paid and doing what I love to have a camera in my hand is like the goal. Yeah. You know, it's, that's interesting. It's a great answer. Cause one of the questions I typically ask photographers yeah. is, are you a photographer who does weddings Yeah. or are you a wedding photographer who does right. other things? Right. And in the past I've been really critical about that, but yeah. I think as I grow older, I'm like, Oh, that, that me was so judgmental of other professions. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, I still would get upset when you hear of people that are like, Oh, I've got to shoot this wedding. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> well, like, I love well, to shoot weddings. Uh, come on, be honest here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weddings are hard. Yeah. Aren't, aren't they, they hard? Are they? Well, I think they're, I mean, it's a long day. For example, how many hours do you shoot? I shoot a lot. I mean, but it's so funny, like, <laughs> I love my kids, but having kids is hard. <laughs> well, you know it is, I mean? yeah. So like, most but it's a great thing. Most Just people like are like, oh, you give up your Saturdays though, and I'm like, I'm a freelance photographer. I don't give up anything. Like, I yeah. think we're very fortunate to do what we do, to work for ourselves. So like giving up a Saturday isn't what I see. I see it as I get to hang out with this couple and not have any, you know, parent, parental <laughs> uh, 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 responsibilities, yeah. which is huge. You know, there's like a trade off. And then, and then, you know, I would say the majority of our industry does love being a part of the wedding where in the past there are, situations where I've heard people like, 
you know, just cut the cake already. I, <laughs> I need to go home. I'm tired, you know? And I'm like, are you kidding? Like, I think of the day, the most stressful parts for me are like in the middle of the day, you know? And I, I say stressful lightly, but I mean the part where I've really got to focus on making sure either I'm working with the wedding planner or I am the wedding planner mm -hmm. to where I'm trying to like, you know, make sure everyone's on time and stuff like that. That's the part. When we get to like the reception, it's like, woohoo, let's uh, party. Freedom. Everything's so yeah. automated at that point. They're sitting down. We've got to go through these motions that are very important to the day. And it's amazing how modern couples are like removing this part of the, the reception and oh, I'm not doing that. Right. That's, I don't believe in taking off the garter. That seems really odd now, yeah. you know? So, once we get to that part of the night, it's just like, this is great. And that's where my editorial stuff just really takes over. Looking around and trying to capture um, different candid moments and, um, and having fun. Like, I'll say that I'm this many hours, but if like, if it's a true party, like if it's oh, really yeah. going, I'm hanging out. Right, yeah, I've we're told, the same way. Uh, and, and a, a second shooter that I use a lot, Sarah True with Blind Fox Weddings, we'll say like our goodbyes and get everything packed up and then we'll just be like do you want to leave and she's like not really and we'll like hang out so i've said our goodbyes and then like an hour later like you see the bride and the groom like you're still shooting <laughs> what like what are you here? doing <laughs> like we don't have to pay to i'm like no this is just there are too many amazing moments happening right now and we're having fun we we believe in story yeah. Right. So we're videographers by yeah. profession, but right. we believe in stories. So right. if the story's still happening, yeah. we're going to be there for it. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate. Like I think to think of all the, you know, budgets or time constraints where they're like, we're leaving now. Goodbye. Right. Because of that, where I think a lot of moments might be missed. Yeah, sure. You know, because they of that. Are. And so a lot of times in my head, I'm like, oh man, like, I just want to hang out because I'm positive we're going to continue to see how crazy this gets. Yeah. You know, I don't know. So I, I think that I, um, like everything, I overthink it too much. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this couple's amazing. Everyone's dancing. Like, yeah, if I think the shots have been caught and captured and it's kind of slowing down, then I'll leave. But if the party's still going, sometimes still I, going. yeah. We, I often reply to people when they say, what do you do for a living? Yeah. I'll say, I get to go to a party every weekend. Yeah. Right? Right. And you get to see these people on their best behavior. Yep. Dressed uh, up to the hilt, right? Well, best behavior. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so they're, they're trying hard. They're trying hard. <laughs> so you said you've done the, the first wedding in North Carolina. Yeah. Have you done weddings outside of Cincinnati other than that one? Yeah. This uh, 2019, I had a wedding in uh, Colorado. Mm hmm uh, I had a wedding like in, in the mountains. Yeah. Awesome. It was amazing. Um, I had a wedding in Green Bay and a wedding in uh, Notre Dame. Nice. Yeah. I, I get, and it's usually, um, past bridesmaids or groomsmen. They're like, Hey, this is random, but would you travel? I'm like, of course. Yeah. Of course I'll travel. Like, so you enjoy destination. Yeah. Weddings. And I tailor the price to where I'm like, I'm not going to stay at like, you know, Hilton, I'll look for a really uh, uh, affordable Airbnb right. and, you know, and I'll look for a decently priced flight and maybe I'll only charge X amount for the flight just because I want to, you know, add to that. And it's a mini vacation. It's a mini vacation. It's great for your portfolio yeah. and it's fun. It is. You know, so I, we're, we're with you 100% yeah. on that. Yeah. Uh, so um, you have shot weddings elsewhere. What makes shooting in Cincinnati so great. It, it, it's, it's a very photogenic city, isn't it? It is. It is. And um, I, I love shooting here. I think that the photographers and the vendors here, I think we're hardened a little bit more than, say, Colorado, meaning, California. Meaning, meaning like we really have to find these great locations that I, I tend to focus more on the couples. So I don't really care about the background so much. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's, it's like writing it in when you go to Colorado. But at the same time, everyone was like, oh, Dave, you're going to crush it. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see your photos. Like, you could, you could take your iPhone. And you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I was a little stressed because I'm like, now there's this pressure of like, you're going to this place where you see all these amazing photos and now you're going to- The expectations of the Expectation of your work is like that much higher and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> you know, like, I got to be really good this time. <laughs> so in Cincinnati, I think that, I think that photographers here, we are, we're, kind of forced to be more creative because of, you know, we don't have those amazing 
backdrops or whatever. Um, I love our city, but I do know with like, with the, the amount of rain, you know, my plan B for rain has right. completely changed from what it used to be in the past because, I mean, last year alone, I think I had like five or six pretty awful weather days, but I've got my spots to where they were really, you know, pleased with, with, the, with, with what we were dealt with, with what I delivered. That's cool. Yeah. What kind of style do you have? Or do you? Or does it depend on the bride and groom? Um, that's a great question. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's funny. I, I really, I, you know, I was old day when I was talking about being too critical. You know, everyone used photojournalism as a style. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh yeah, what, what war zone are you documenting? <laughs> like, you know, or, and that's horrible to be that like judgmental of, <laughs> of someone saying that they're this in terms of like a marketing, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and then the last one, it's, I mean, I think it's dying off, but I love like seeing lifestyle photographer. I'm like, yeah, really? What's that entail? <laughs> like, right. Are you just saying that you don't want to like say that you're a wedding photographer or no, but my style has definitely been a culmination of the experience over the years from editorial work to working for a high fashion photographer. Mm -hmm. And it's just trying to <clears> not, <throat> I don't, I don't want my images to look overposed, too cheesy. So right. I, I definitely go for an editorial approach. Um, so I'll, I'll see certain things that are trending and there's certain things that I like, but there's certain things I'm pretty stubborn about. But at the same time, I talk to my couples and be like, look, if you want, you know, your heads together for this shot, let's do it. But I typically don't use that as like a go-to pose. Right. I'm obsessed with simple hand-holding and walking because I think that couples really get their, you know, their minds wrapped out of I'm being photographed and they're focusing more on walking. And I say little things like, this is your moment. Yeah. I'm not here. I, I'll use like really long lenses to where I'm not in their faces and special things happen for that. So editorial, obviously you do have to put together some pose shots, but uh, mostly editorial and yeah. I love that. Natural. Because what you're wanting is natural, yeah. right? Real. I, I, Couples I, do walk and hold hands. Yeah. I, I, they I, don't put their foreheads together a right, lot of times. Right, they don't. <laughs> but the couples that do it or the moments when that happens and you capture it, I mean, it's, it's pretty magical. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't do this, but that happened on their own and it looks great. Yeah. You know, as to where sometimes I see some portfolios where I'm like, oh, that's adorable. <laughs> like, that just does not. So when a couple thinks, I think I might want to hire David Steven. Yeah. What's the process look like? Do you talk to them? Do you interview them? Do you, do you make sure somehow that you're going to be compatible together? Today's couples and with you just all the information that we're given across the board outside of even weddings, I'm, I love that a lot of couples just, there's a connection. They, they'll either mention in the email, I don't know what it is about your work, or there's just this natural, organic, that's a funny word, um, <laughs> connection that happens where couples just know when they see the work, they like it. And uh, it's something I also mention in consultations towards the end is like, make sure you talk to like at least five of us. Mm. And then maybe even meet the last three in person. Yeah. So the people that hire me, there's that just, they don't get it, but there's a draw to my work and there's a draw to what they're seeing. And I love that. And then a lot of it is bridesmaids and, and groomsmen that have seen me in action. Mm. And they just said to themselves, or they've written it down, or they've seen the work after the wedding and they go, that's who I want for my wedding. And that's it's, kind of the best. It's that word of mouth slash associated word of mouth. It's, that's the strongest advertising in the yeah, world. Yeah, it is. And it, you know what? I like it because we're a business and you're supposed to keep business and friendship, you know, separate, or maybe that's a rule. Maybe it's not, I'm making it up, but I like that, that that's rooted. That was at the beginning of our process mm -hmm. of being together. And I believe in that, you know, I, I think that there's something very special to have that connection with them. And hopefully I had another connection. You know, I try to focus on the yeah. main couple, but, um, I think that's the biggest honor is that they go, Hey, what days do you have open? We're planning our wedding, and you like, wow, that's big. It's huge. Yeah. It's, it's I, I'm, I'm deeply moved. Or being hired by photographers to shoot the wedding. Yeah. People ask me, do you ever get stressed out shooting? I'm like, no, never. Yeah. They're like, 
oh wait, when a photographer hires me to shoot his wedding, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, because I really you know you're it. under the microscope. Yeah, or you you're shooting a wedding and you hear there's a wedding photographer in the bri in the <laughs> bridal party or at the and you're like, really? Who is it? Yeah. Where are they? I want to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, you mentioned uh, how satisfying it is to you when like somebody plans their wedding day around when you're available. Yeah, we know social media these days is yeah. so huge, and right. the fact that reviews are they're important to us. Right. 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 Um, Write your own review. What right. would be important to you to hear in a perfect review of Dave and Steve in photography? Write my own review about my own work? Yeah. Well, no, about, as oh, if you were a client. As if I was a client? What's, a, what's important that you offer people? What kind of experience do you want them to have? Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even prepared for that because I, <laughs> I overthink everything. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I think yeah, this is right up your alley. You get to overthink this to death. I do. I think well, I'll try to break it down. I think. On the social media part, I guess being 40, I overthink like too much of what I post because social media is like a a final review. We used to have that in college, right. final, final Fridays, where you put your work out for artists to break down and talk about the composition and the lighting and all that. Um, reviews and social media, I'm very timid about I probably I'll say right now I don't post enough on Instagram yeah because I'm like whew, it's a lot to just put stuff up there for everyone to judge I love that Instagram took out um, the likes to where you see how many likes right I think that was very important for a number of reasons for for kids in high school that are going through bullying or whatever that just said slowing down that but the perfect review um, I mean some of the reviews that I have I would gauge off of this question and it just goes into talking about the, I wanted to be there with him. I want, I, we became true friends. I think that that's really important to seek out in other photographers or other people that you hire. You get that more um, genuine, personal connection. So I think that's what I would look for in a review, is that. So I'll follow it up with this. Okay. And I think I know kind of the answer to this question, but yeah. I want to hear your answer. Right. What's more important to you, the experience that a bride and groom had with you? Yeah. Or the photos they get? The experience. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been shooting for over 20 years, so mm -hmm. I know I'm going to capture some great stuff, but I think the experience is really important because um, being self-aware is something I'm also overthinking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, Coming into any situation during getting ready, you have a range of emotions that are happening. And so knowing your presence in that situation and how you can tip it over the scales or help it. Um, one of the best reviews that I won't post online was a review, and I'll, I'll choke up about it. Uh-oh. Was a, was a I'm gonna make you cry. Was a, yeah, <laughs> was a review from a father, a handwritten note, oh. to where you know everyone leave the room, you know, and sh there was a moment for that bride yeah. and I just kind of bust down the door and did something I rarely do, which is show how gorgeous she looked. And I'd be like, look, this is all in your head. Look how amazing you look. All these things that you think are going wrong with the day right. are just in your head, you know? And so it's toppling over and that's a natural reaction. I'm gonna shut the door, have the moment, look how amazing you look and let's reset. Nice. And like, I. I, that just happened naturally, yeah. you know, I'm not a counselor, but I felt like in that moment that, wow, maybe I do have the right. So that's important. Having someone that can do that. It's not just the photography. There are some amazing technical photographers out there that capture insane work that I'm even jealous of myself, mm -hmm. but that are also very much an artist to where they're very shy or very quiet, where I think it would have been a completely different, you know, outcome. Weddings, like experiences, are about moments. Yeah. They're about moments. Right. Right? right. Technically, we all want to be perfect at what we do, our right. videography, your photography. Right. But it doesn't have to be that way because yeah. it's about capturing the moment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. How many weddings do you, do you like to do? Um, well, with the mix of commercial and um, I would say my stubbornness to adapt to that like current constant style. I typically only get about 15 to 20 a year, mm -hmm. which I like. Yeah. I don't know if I was shooting 30 to 40 weddings a year, if you would get the same Dave. Maybe. I don't think that I would, I, I might not be as, you know, passionate about it. 
So I think that's, yeah, that's, that's a tough one, but. How far in advance should a couple try to book you if they're interested? I just booked, <laughs> so it's January. Of 2020. Of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> and I just booked a wedding for July. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's always changing. It used to be like, but then I also booked um, six months ago a 2021 20, wedding. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's the couple. There are couples that go, I want that person, I want to make sure, and they're booking. Or it's just their personality to always be, you know, oriented and have everything taken care of right. so that they're, you know, not as stressed. But yeah, it's, it's, it's such a wide range of, of times. Um, but yeah. Contact information. Yeah. How do people get a hold of you? Um, I do advertise them with one place, the, the Knot. I love The Knot. I think that there's so many couples that would have never found out about me mm -hmm. had it not been for them. Okay. Um, Web I've, website? I, website, yeah. David Steven, okay. uh, dot co or David Steven Photography dot com. Phone number? 513-888-0870. Got it. Yeah. Uh, did I miss anything? No, I think we covered a lot. Um, I was, we covered the this subject? This a lot of fun, yeah. Did you little, have a good time? I was a little nervous, but I also am a chatty Cathy, so. Thanks for coming to our studio, yeah. better known as our kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Nicely done, my friend. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to For Better or Worse, sponsored by Little Brown Dog Productions. Next week's guest is Elisa McKenzie of Elegant Events by Elisa. Until then, happy planning. <laughs>